This was their Fool's Gold series. And people kept screaming to do that one. So I'm gonna check it out, baby. Let's so. I think my first go. video would be. Let's go. Not so. Go. Words. Four. I didn't think my first video would be Dungeons and Dragons, but, uh. Well. Here we go. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't just leave just yet. You do not have to know Dungeons and Dragons in order to appreciate the stupidity. Now, I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for about uh, six to seven years. All right. And I've never royally messed up like this before. Uh -huh. Oh, Dingo, don't beat yourself up. Everybody messes up in D&D. Isn't that kind of like the point of the game? Everybody TPKs their team eventually. I mean, stray fireball gets out of your hand. One of your teammates has something explosive on their back. And boom! New campaign! I'm starting to think these uh, team explosions or team kills happen more often than I'm aware. What's your worst party wipe in D&D? Let me know. No, but you don't understand. I TPK'd the universe. Just a little bit of background. This was a 3.5 campaign okay. done by my boyfriend Felix. And there were mm. about five players. At the time, there was only three of us because the other two were sick. My character was a level six wild mage named Sips. The mm. thing about a wild mage is that they can cast magic, but they have a percentile where their magic can go a wild, where it can really mess up everything. You want to mm. cast create water? Well, how about snakes? Mm. Or you want to cast light? Well, how about a dire bear? My character's wild magic percentile was determined by how much his curse was grown on him. He had oh, a crocodile hand, and the more that it grew onto him and his skin became more into a crocodile, the higher percentage his wild magic was. Ooh, at the time, he was about at cool 30% idea. for his magic to just go yeah. buck wild. The session started normally like all cool sessions. Cool idea where we were trying to get to another town. Okay. And this town particularly was in the swamps, and it was called Naturally. Alchemist Quarry. We're traveling through the swamps, and we constantly have to make reflex saves because there's friggin' earthquakes every gosh darn minute. We do so I'm guessing a reflex save is like, um, if something is done like in the environment or something like that, pardon my poor mind here. If something of like uh, the environment or something like happened, like say an earthquake or um, you're falling into quicksand or something like that, is like a reflex save. Like how bad it could be? Oh, it could be anything. Ah, gotcha. Could be anything. Thank you. Yeah, parkour. How good is your par? Is basically the reflex save is how good is your par? Is how good is your parkour? Pretty much. Get out of the a wait. Gotcha. Dodge chance. Reaction encounter. Gotcha. Thank you. I didn't really think much of it, but turns out it's kind of our death foreshadowing we arrived at the town and this town was really that's a test it of was your magical reflexes. as fuck <laughs> everything was magical all the buildings all the people just magic 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 hmm. since there were only about three of us instead of the normal five we kind of all looked at each other and went mm, want to go get drunk Heck yeah. We went for a drink and, well, my character doesn't really drink. He's never gotten drunk before. So initially when he went to the bar, he kind of hung out and did nothing until one of the players in my group went up to me and said, Hey, you want to sing karaoke with me? Oh, no. And Sips was like, uh... I'm going to have to get really drunk for that. So he rolled and he got a natural one. So he kind of just looked at the drink and was instantly smashed. <laughs> now, I don't know what you think, but I think having a drunk wild mage 
is not really a great combination. Oh, God. But Sips managed to go up there and actually crush it. He was a great singer. He rolled high. And Mm. at the end, he wanted to show off his little bit of magic and cast dancing lights as something like, ta-da! Well, uh... When he did that, yeah. Felix rolled for the percentile and got like a 20, 29, like just just under the percentile. So oh! as soon as he cast lights, oh! dance. No, oh, that's the worst. That is the worst. But it's right there. <laughs> that's great. Dancing lights? It was ro- wild magic. We uh, all kind of looked at each other and went, what, what, what's going to happen? And so Felix was like, okay, okay, I got this. I got this. He looks at the chart next to him okay. and he rolls to see what he has to choose from the chart. So okay. he rolls and then you kind of see this expression on his face where he goes, ooh. And then... Everybody kind of like looks at each other and goes, uh-huh. uh, what's up, Felix? With this blank stare into nothingness, he goes, when you cast dancing lights, you uh-huh. feel the energy leave your hand and then you feel nothing after. As you have now created a 700 foot radius of permanent dead magic. <gasps> as in... No magic can exist in this space. Ever. We're in a city that is all magic. Everything's magic. The drinks are magic. Food's magic. Your underwear is magic. Everything is magic. And I just created a 700 foot radius, so 1400 feet across, of permanent dead magic. Sips kind of like stands there and... First of all, he's drunk, so he doesn't really realize what just happened. But the player next to me definitely knows what just happened. Everybody in the bar just starts to freak out. Yeah. The guards go into yeah. a panic. They the see what yeah. I just did. Yeah, in short, the entire town just... <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the end. And they just Jesus. charge at me. Yeah. In which the player next to me grabs me and says, Oh, we gotta go. We run down the alley being chased by these pretty pissed off guards and yep. pretty pissed off civilians. And yeah. my character's like, what's everybody so mad about? We see a building that we can climb up and hide from everyone. We get up and we somehow manage to avoid the guards and the angry mob of magic users. Well, prior magic users. And... There comes over this false sense of security that everything's fine. And mm-hmm. we're on top of this this building and it's like, oh, thank God we lost them. Probably not a great idea to create a 700 foot radius of permanent dead magic. But yeah. you see, that wasn't that wasn't the problem. Because the problem was really when, the player? when I heard Felix go, how big was that permanent dead magic zone? And I kind of, like, turn him and say, uh, like, 700 feet radius, so 1,400 feet across, and yep. he just has this horrified look on his face. You can just see the numbers floating in front of his head as he's trying to calculate something. He turns and goes through his notes frantically, looking for something, and then you just hear a, oh, oh no, oh, Oh, oh no. In which the entire group goes, what? What is it? And then we feel a rumble underneath us. The same rumbles we've been feeling all throughout the campaign. These little earthquakes that I was complaining about. Yeah. So we turn and we see this creature bursting out of the ground and rising up. And you know what it is? For any of you kids at home that may know, it's a mother (laughs) tarasque. And for any of you kids who don't, don't know what fun. a Tarrasque is at home, no. this thing is 50 feet tall, 70 feet long, and weighs 130 tons. This is the scariest creature in D&D. Everybody's dead. It eats worlds for fun. 
It's it's there by there. So it's death let incarnate. me just uh, read Godzilla. an excerpt from the D and D Wikipedia page on the Tarasque. All right. Although no one present has likely ever seen it before, its hulking monstrosity is instantly recognized to anyone who has ever heard the stories of the legendary Wrath. There is only one beast that casts its shadow over entire cities, only one creature capable of striking such fear into all who gaze upon it. After all, there is only one to ask. All it does is kill, eat, sleep, and repeat. This thing has 700 Holy health. Holy shit! Go back. What was that? Repeat. This thing. Whoa. Uh. 20d20 plus 7 700 hp holy shit uh armor class 49 plus 3 dice plus what in the shit uh anti-magic arsenal improved grab fightful frightful presence spines swallow whole acid resistance 20 cold resistance jesus christ deus ex machina hello to dnd super yeah this is the shinryu of of dnd obviously uh, four plus thirty-three. Uh, holy shit! Strength plus twenty. Fifty. I'm sorry. Fifty. Dex. Jesus Christ! Can you even kill this thing? The only way to stop it is to wish it away. God damn. Thing has seven hundred health. Attacks with plus forty-six and moves at eighty feet. Per turn. This thing is insane. And did I forget to mention that I'm a level six? All Destroy my party on! members are level yeah. six. How are we supposed to go against a level 20? It's a god. Yeah, because it turns out this village out in the middle of nowhere has a freaking Tarrasque underneath it. And that was held by immovable rods of magic. And you let so it when out. I cast that dead magic zone of 700 feet it kind of dispelled the rods and uh released the tarasque yeah but it and wasn't let it out. really my fault because who freaking keeps a tarasque underneath their city yeah, it That's just happened that tarasque was under the there Antichrist yeah. in your closet yeah so i drunkenly sang karaoke so bad that i released the apocalypse Today's video is sponsored by that's, the Deck of Many um, Dots. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, sucks. It sucks. That absolutely sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you let out, uh, you let Shinryu, uh, you let Shinryu out of the void closet. Yes, you did. That's a yikes. <laughs>